plan out what you're buying. 50, 30, 20 rule. You know how you're just endlessly scrolling. Saving really saves you. Hey guys, it's Catherine here again and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, thank you so much for stopping by. Today's video, just like the title says, is bad and toxic habits that kept me broke in my 20s. Bad money habits that shouldn't keep you broke in your 20s or even if you're in your early 30s because I'm in my early 30s right now. Now, if this is something that you're interested in, definitely keep on watching now you guys this video is a video idea that i wrote last year but for some reason i've just been feeling like i wasn't qualified enough to talk about these things that i've listed out in this video maybe because last year was one year that i struggled a bit i don't know i feel like a lot of us experienced everything that went on last year you know we started it last year you know buying foil at 180 naira per liter to buying foil now at 600, 650, depending on where you stay. Some people buy foil now at 700 naira per liter. So you know that, you know, your expense for the year would have to increase. Like I went from budgeting about 8k for foil in my car and about 4k for fuel in my generator which is about 12,000 naira so budgeting almost 50k that's like 49 48,000 naira in a month for fuel so of course you know that last year we experienced a lot financially like in Nigeria due to the increase in the cost of living then this year dollar has just been turning on its own <laughs> like dollar has just been a lot this year so as a result of these things you know we we spent a lot more last year so last year I wasn't able to save diligently for my rent like I would have saved other years do you understand so it has just been stopping me from making this video but Nonetheless, I'm going to make this video because I know that I'm getting better at my finances and I feel like this point would help somebody. So I decided to share one of the bad money habits that I feel like keeps us broke as Gen Z's and millennials and young people in general is peer pressure. You know how you're trying to keep up with certain trends. Let's say this particular handbag is trending. Everybody is buying it. You open your TikTok, you open your Instagram, you open your Twitter, you open YouTube and you see every creator talking about this product. Forgetting that sometimes influencers are sent, not sometimes, a lot of times, influencers have sent these products for free, even though, yes, they work for it because creating that content is a job. And you as a regular 95 er or as a regular person will just go and purchase that item. And sometimes it will be stuck in your wardrobe for the longest time. You don't even get to wear that particular item or carry that particular bag if it's a bag or shoe. So you just spend money buying things that you don't necessarily need. But because of your consumption on social media because you have been seeing that particular item for the longest time everybody is buying it you have gone to buy that item and it's not necessarily in need for you so that's one thing that keeps people broke peer pressure that forces you to buy things that you really do not need but because every other person is buying it you feel like it is something you should also own next thing that i feel like is keeping us broke in our early in our 20s and our, in our early 30s is living beyond your means so like i said last year was a year for us even this year is beginning to look like it but when others are saying that there is a casting down, I'm going to say that there is a lifting up. I'm not going to be among those people that will be complaining and nagging about the situation of things in the country. Yes, it is bad. But when others are saying there is a casting down, I'll be saying that there is a lifting up. Now, going back to the second point that I feel like is keeping us broke in our 20s and 30s is living beyond your means. Spending more than you earn is a surefire way to stay broke learn to create a budget and stick to it now this is something that i started doing like in my 
late twenties or maybe mid twenties, not late. In my mid twenties, it was something I started doing. So I came across this 50, 30, 20 rule. And what it means is that 50% of your earnings should go into your needs. 30% of your earnings should go into your wants and 20% of your earnings should go into your savings. Now, what are the 50% that should go into your needs? Foods, groceries, bills, utilities, housing, rent, transportation, all these things should be in your needs because <laughs> being able to commute to work it's a need. It's not a want. Do you understand? Now, for your wants, we have things like shopping, dining out, you know, like wanting to go to maybe this new restaurant in town. You want to go try out the food. Those things should be in your wants. Entertainment, travel should be in your wants. Then savings should be, savings should be like your emergency fund, retirement fund, investments in stocks, you know, and all of that should be your savings. Okay. So since I came across this rule, I have been using it so well. Like it has even helped me plan better. Like now before my salary comes in a month, I already draw up a budget of what and what I want to spend that salary on. Do you understand? So that's something that I feel like you should do. Now, another thing that I feel like keeps us broke is not saving. You know, I just talked about saving. It's always good to save for like emergencies. That's something I'm learning to do now. Before now, I didn't used to save for emergencies. I just used to like have a particular amount that I tailor into savings. Now, something happened to me last month. I put in a certain amount for, I think I put about 15K for like emergencies in a month for me out of my salary. And guess what happened last month? My car on just stopped working. So it was that money that I set aside for emergencies that I used to sort out my car and I bought a new one and then paid the rewire that worked on it. Imagine if I didn't set aside a particular amount for emergencies. Do you understand? I would have just been in a fix, you know? So like saving really saves you. Like it saves you. So it's important that you have different types of savings. Like I said, the emergency savings, which is the money that I use to sort out my car on issue. Now, another point that I feel like um, keeps us broke is impulse spending. You guys, you know how you're just endlessly scrolling on social media. I'm sorry that I'm saying, talking about social media a lot because whether we like it or not, I don't have a TV in my house. So a lot of times I spend a lot of my time when I'm out of work, I spend a lot of my time on social media. I'm just scrolling endlessly. TikTok, TikTok is becoming one of my favorite apps right now. TikTok and you're just scrolling and you just see, oh, one of your favorite creators is wearing this dress. It's not something that you really need, but because your favorite creator is putting it on, you have grown to, let's say, pretty little thing or one of all these fast fashion brands and you go and buy that dress and later on, you are no longer interested in that dress. Do you understand? Like it is important for you not to just impulse buy. It's important for you to plan out what you're buying. So what I do now, if I see something that I like, I give it about a month. Like I wait it out. I put it on my wish list for the longest time to see if that thing is really a need, something that I need. Do you understand? You know, before I go, I go about buying that particular item. Do you understand? So that's something that I do. And I feel like we need to stop impulse buying. Another thing that I feel like makes us broke is not investing. Failing to invest can limit your ability to grow your wealth over time. Make informed investment decisions. That's something I'm beginning to look at. Like the other day, I was talking to my colleague about money markets. I think I, I was just, is it money market fund? I was just with him and I saw a particular money market invest in and I was talking to him about it and I have been doing my research right now now that's something that I want to do like two years ago I used to invest a lot in stocks I stopped in uh, foreign stocks like Google and all of that using the Bamboo app if you want to use Bamboo to invest in stocks you can use my link in this description box below. Two years ago, I used to invest a lot in international stocks using bamboo. Now I invest in Nigerian, in the Nigerian stock markets using Meristem now. And yeah, so like I'm just looking for different ways to just 
invest my money. There was something that my, that happened to my dad when we were younger. My dad saved all his money with Savannah Bank. If you're a millennial, you would know Savannah Bank. And as at that time, I remember how difficult things were for us you know things were so hard all my father's money was in savannah bank and he lost it when the banks folded up so because of that i have learned from my father's experience and to know that it is not good for me to just leave my money in a particular place so now i'm learning to just diversify my fund and just invest my money and just invest my money in different places another thing that i feel like keeps us broke is not tracking expenses now this is something that i do and i do so well so before receiving my salary i would have drawn up like my budget for the month then as the month goes by i go back to that budget that i've that i drew up and i'm ticking things that i've spent money or on and i check i track to make sure that i'm not you know like overspending what i have in my budget it's a conscious thing like you need to make it a conscious effort to you know track your expenses which is something that i do and i think that you should do as well so another thing that i feel like keeps us broke is the lack of financial education not knowing the basic financial principles can hinder your ability to make use to make wise money decisions oh my god this is something i'm beginning to learn now i listen to podcasts there's this podcast episode by i said what i said where they were talking about money and i think that episode was with i can't remember the name of the lady but that episode is so insightful if i find it i'm going to either leave it on the screen or i'll leave it in my description box so go check out that podcast episode is going to help you then you can check out other podcasts where they talk about money money mindset savings and all of that like financial education will help you manage your money better so another thing that i feel like keeps us broke is neglecting retirement planning you cannot be young forever so it's important that you start planning for retirement now. You know, if you have a nine to five, you know, we have the pension scheme, but even apart from this pension scheme, like it's also important. So there's this thing that I'm beginning to map out that I want to start doing now, even to my pension. I want to start paying a certain amount of like my savings into my pension so that I'm saving for my retirement as well, not just the one that my employer is doing for me. I know that in order for you to pay your pension, there's a particular percentage that comes from the employer. There's a particular percentage that comes from you as the employee. But then also, I want to start making a conscious effort to, you know, save a little extra into my retirement. So that's something that I feel like, you know, would help us. And yeah, those are the points, guys. And I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, do not forget to like, comment, subscribe and share and i do not want to want to end this video without talking to you guys about different apps that you can use to save for me for my rent i use the calorie rise app why because with calorie rise you cannot just out of the blues just say oh you want to deduct you want to withdraw your money but i think they are trying to set up something that would help you do that now but that's one of the reasons why i decided to use career wise i've been using career wise to save for my rent for about three to four years now i've been using it and it has been helpful very helpful to me so you can check out career wise i have a link in the description box you can use my link to sign up also another app that i use is piggy vest so I use Piggy Vest to save like, like my regular savings. And with Piggy Vest, you know, if you are in a tight fix, like you have like an emergency and you need the funds, they will charge you a fee, but you're able to withdraw your money. That's with Piggy Vest. If you need a link, I have a link in my description box. Another app that I use to save my money is CredPal. And one of the things that I like about these apps is you have this automatic save. You know, so I just put a particular date name in the month, maybe just a few days after I've received my pay for them to just deduct the money from my account. So I do that with CarryWise, Piggy Vest, and this final app, CredPal. So I use CredPal to save. With CredPal, the plan that I do, I save, like I reinvest my money into the app every two months and I gain interest in the app. So I have a link in my description box too, if you're interested. 
Now, yeah, we've come to the end of this video. If you liked it, do not forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, share, share. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Doesn't make sense now. She just got around, things are getting intense now. I hear you talking about we a lot, oh, you speak French now.